What up? It's Golden Spaces. We are here. It's an Odyssey original podcast. It's me and Karima after uh <laughs> was it 21 that win. Point, 21 point victory over the Miami Heat in Miami. First night of a back to back. Pretty good performance from this team. I called, I didn't call it, but like I did say a game earlier. I said they were going to beat Minnesota and then it was going to be great mm-hmm. vibes again. And we're back. I was one game off. Uh, but now, I mean, yes and no. They played Minnesota well, to be honest. They, they really played. did. Yeah. But they got the win over the Heat. You know, there's there's no Jimmy, no Tyler, whatever the case may be. But you play who's in front of you and they beat them down held them to 92 points uh the starters for the warriors it went back to the original right raymond suspension starting lineup with clay thompson in for brandon pajimski adding more offense next to steph um adding more offense next to everybody honestly kaminga wiggins draymond more spacing and it resulted in four of the five starters having at least 17 points all of them shooting well over 50% from the field. Well, Steph didn't, but um, he was, you know, getting double teamed all night. With her. Yeah. And, you know, the offense just flowed a lot better with the starters. Now, the bench offense was pretty terrible, considering that they took the, the best score off the bench. Right, the right. Lineup, and there was no trace. So, Chris Paul scoring in the in the scoring from trace was absent, but – the, the biggest standout really from the game was their defense. They held them to 92 points, 40% from the field, 24 from the three, complete flip of what we've seen against Indiana, complete flip from what we've seen right. against uh, Minnesota in the second half of that game. And I think the comments from Draymond and Steve Kerr talking about how everybody's quiet and pretty much calling everybody out on defense mm-hmm. definitely, I think, fired everybody up and made them come into this game with a certain level of intensity. Right. And you actually could hear them on defense. So mm-hmm. clearly it was a point of contention. Like if y'all don't start talking, it's just not going to work. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, that's the, like, I don't understand why this team isn't taking every single marginal thing very seriously, because that's the only way that this team is going to be as good as they can possibly be. They, they aren't, the 2017, 2018 Warriors with right. Kevin Durant on it and four other Hall of Famers in their prime and Steph Curry in his prime, like his his athletic prime at least, you're not going to sleepwalk through half of the game and then just beat the other team in one quarter because you feel like it. That's just not going to happen, right? You're going to have to right. scrap every defensive possession, go for every loose ball, box out, never miss a rotation, build those type of habits because you do not have the overwhelming talent that you – seemingly think you have to be able to just turn it on at any point right um so and at this point in the season like you're you're fighting to stay out of 11th at this point you want to at least make the play in so you give so you have a chance to to do something and if you can get into the playoffs it you know it's just another chance you get a, you got a puncher's chance there and then you get your young guys some more experience um to help them for years in the future and stuff like that and really see what you got on another playoff stage before you decide to shake up the roster in the off season. So they need to have this type of intensity from here on out. I think. Absolutely. <laughs> that is correct. Carry mm-hmm. this with you for the rest of the season. They had to feel good about what they put out there, their intensity, their attention to detail. Just, mm-hmm. I mean, Andrew Wiggins, like, look, when you actually care, JK, when you actually care about playing defense, Chris, another story, but you actually care about it, then to me, it seems like it frees up the game for you. It frees up your offense as well because you're getting the stops. You're able to get into transition and keep it moving. So I'm just hoping that they bottle all of this up for the remainder of the, what is that? 11, 12 more games or whatever that we have. Like we need that kind of intensity every game and you get up a big enough lead. You can take some breaks, Mm -hmm. (sighs) get your breath, come back and do it again. So that I'm, I'm praying for that. 
<laughs> yeah, I think honestly, they the way they handled the rotations tonight made a lot of sense, right? You didn't sit Steph for an extended period of time in these moments where like you're losing the lead and stuff like that. Like Steph got the run that he needed. Um, I think he probably would have ended up somewhere around 33, 34 minutes tonight if they didn't like have the garbage time and stuff like that at the end. Mm-hmm. Clay as well, like play him in like five minute stints, bring him out, bring and him back in, bring yep. him out. Yeah, it's just long enough for him to keep his rhythm, but it's not too long to where he starts to lose his legs. Right. And and I think they did something pretty early, which was establish like um Steph and Clay in terms of featuring them in the offense like early. Mm-hmm. I think that helped a lot because Clay is a rhythm player, as much as people um don't want to acknowledge that, like he's not. 2017 clay where he can just not touch the ball for five minutes straight and then he touches it and he's still hot like because he just right. he's that level of shooter like he needs some touches he needs to see the ball go in a few times he need to feel the feel the you know ball a little bit like ball handling and stuff like that um before he can really get into a rhythm and start hitting the shots that we know that he can hit with consistency so when he gets frozen out it's hard for him to be consistent you know, and in a way, it's the same thing for Andrew Wiggins. We saw tonight they they let him kind of do his thing in transition, let him handle the ball a little bit more. And, you know, he was aggressive with it. But now he obviously has to stay aggressive. But like when they let him do those things, um, it's a much better version of him and just a much better version of, you know, Clay in general as well. Right. Hey, and this is two games now in a row for Andrew mm-hmm. Wiggins and energy level. The seat hot. Are are we on something? Like what? 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 <laughs> we look, we'll be, be de- look, we'll be tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see. Right. We'll see. Um. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna just say. We'll see because we we've, we've been here before. We've been here a bunch of times before. We have. We have. Um. So let's just see if he can continue doing it and and, and all that good stuff. So let's get into some individual performances. Um, we can start with Clay Thompson. He was the leading scorer of the game. So we can shout him out first. He was a plus 25 as well. So all the plus minus um, warriors out there who like to point to lineup plus minuses and all that type of stuff. Um, Clay starting was a plus 25. He had 28 points, hit six threes, timely threes. Um, yeah. I think just as a team, everybody's defense was pretty stout tonight. So defensively, he was fine. Moving the yeah, ball as well. Yeah. yeah, he had some blocks in there. I think he had like maybe one or two heat checks, but he did, like, but he recovered with that block. Both plays he yeah, recovered. Yeah, because I was like, <laughs> but he but he hustled. So right. And I mean with Clay, it's like his shot difficulty just in general is very high anyway. Even his catch and shoots, guys are like running their absolute hardest trying to block his shot. So, I mean, I typically don't have any issue with the shots that Steph and Clay take. Um, There's a couple ones in there, obviously, for both of them, where it's like, "Eh, you probably could have got a better one, but you live with those because they're going to make so many of the other ones. And, um, yeah, just overall good game from from Clay. Yeah. Steph, um, I didn't say – I wouldn't say he struggled a little bit from three, but he didn't, like, light light them on fire from three. He was three for ten, but he had a solid game overall. Like, he just let the game come to him, and he knew the type of coverage he was going to get. And he like got the help that he needed from Wiggins, right. Clay, and, and, and JK. And JK. To let him just chill for his and pick his spots for this game. Yeah. Like, I was gonna say, what you gonna say? No, no, no. Because you're you're probably going right in that direction. So go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna ask you like, is this pretty much what he needs? Right, like those three guys stepping up. That's pretty much what he's needed all season. Like. Just 15 uh, to 20 <laughs> from each of them. Like, can y'all all combine for, like, a good little 50 points or something like that for me? Like, I think that's that's pretty much most of the it's, offensive help that he needs. Yeah, that's exactly what he needs because even though he didn't have the greatest from three-point territory, just imagine if they're contributing like they are, plus he's killing it from the perimeter. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's like yeah. we're cooking with grease. So, like that—that's the contributions that we have been, you know, just like begging for. Like, come on, if he's not peak 
Curry, where are the others to step up and fill that void? Mm -hmm. Allow him the time to be like, all right, I don't have it going here, but guess what? I'm going to hook you up. I'm going to hook you up. I'm going to hook you up. But you actually have to be active an active participant in that. <laughs> so sure. it was, it was good to see. So again. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I agree. All three of those guys are capable. Uh, I mean, like Kaminga and Clay, I think are both averaging around like 17 points a game and Wiggins for his career is near 20 a game. So it's like, we're just expecting you guys to just be yourself. Consistently. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> now I do think, you know, this particular lineup, the style of play is more conducive to that happening that they did, mm -hmm. like getting guys going, um, running plays for for Clay, running plays for Andrew, and allowing the guys who actually are the scorers to be directly involved with each other, right? A lot of the times they're running these actions with, uh, I mean, Loon's been out of the rotation for a while, but a lot of times during the season, they're running these pick and rolls with Looney, they're running these mm -hmm. handoffs with Draymond, um, and all these players who aren't necessarily scoring threats. So the other team is just like, I'm going to sell out to the guy who can actually score in this scenario and I'm going to leave the other guy open and they just haven't been making them pay. So when you have plays set like Clay setting a screen for Andrew or setting a screen for JK, it puts the defense in a position where they they can't just have leave one decide. guy open. Yeah. yeah, you have to either switch or you're going to leave one of the two people with an advantage or open completely. And that's where those guys just got to step up and, and make the shots. But having more of that in the offense is an easy way, I think, to just generate offense that doesn't heavily rely on Steph doing everything. Um, right, so right. They need, they need more of that. They need more of that. Because they had, what, Clay set a screen for Andrew like a few possessions in a row, and he scored like two or three times in a row. So that's the type of offense they got to they gotta do um, going forward. That's just easy offense for them. Moving on, I guess we can go and talk about Wiggins, right? We, we already started yeah. the conversation with he had seven rebounds, 17 points. Um, again, everybody was pretty good defensively. He was yeah. active, running the floor. What did you see like from him I, that's different from we, what we've been seeing? We actually felt Wiggins in this game. It mm -hmm. wasn't just like, wait, was he playing? Wait, when did he come in? What? What? No, he actually was putting his stamp on this game, boxing out like what? Like that was mm -hmm. a foreign concept with him a lot of times, but he's boxing out. He's grabbing rebounds. He's hustling. Thank goodness. Granted, he didn't go up, you know, for the dunk or whatever, but still <laughs> he was being aggressive and he stayed aggressive. We didn't see the, you know, like he mm -hmm. likes to do the little trotting down and everything, people blowing past him. But no, he was being active and he stayed aggressive. And that's what we needed. So kudos to Wiggins for finding whatever it is. Maybe it was the Miami nightlife. Who knows? <laughs> but, uh, Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it was Take that with you. <laughs> yeah. Probably Draymond getting up in that tail, just like, yeah. if you want to be out here, you better be out here. Right. Like, it, no pussy the putting around, more, you know? <laughs> <laughs> one of the more surprising things is how we haven't necessarily heard anything about Draymond and Chris Paul getting on guys, like just constantly being on guys. I know they probably are. They just, Right. You know, we just haven't heard anything like any stories about it. But those two guys being in your ear, I'm sure it's probably annoying. They probably like, just like, man, let me just go out there and play hard, so I don't got to <laughs> hear anything from these two dudes. Um, so Kaminga said said as much, you know, in one yeah. of his interviews with Dubs Talk or whatever. So it's just like, yo, you want them to like be quiet, but it's just like if you do your job, they ain't got nothing to say to you. All they'll right. be giving you is praise. Exactly. And passes. Um, there you go. Speaking of Kaminga, another very solid performance, just very consistent offensively. 18 points, seven rebounds, three assists, dunks, going to the basket. Dunks? Is that how we're categorizing that one? I mean, if that's not the number one on Sports Center's top 10 list or whatever, that was insane. 
that mm-hmm. dumb. Because <laughs> he got up, it's like, where did he come from? He just like <laughs> soared. Just that was that was amazing. Mm-hmm. Every everybody in my house was like, yo, you gotta see this. Like it was. Yeah. It was it was like I mean, he's a freak athlete. Like Clay if said you know it, anything might... about it. <laughs> <laughs> Clay said it himself. Like I want to say a few games ago, he like he might be the best athlete in the in the league. Now that's just like a title that's completely up for grabs and up right reputation, <laughs> right? Because you got guys like Zion who's just like so strong and athletic. Mm-hmm. You got Giannis, you know, you got John Moran, all these other guys, but he's up there in that conversation for sure. In terms of guys, is so strong, so bouncy, effortlessly, like. Very explosive, yeah. get his head above the rim, and he just makes plays like that all the time. So that's what's so enticing about his his future. And you know, long term, you you project him being one of those top players in the league because he just has gifts that not a lot of players in the league have. Then you right. put some skill, some experience, uh, IQ that comes with experience on that frame, and like he can be very, very, very good. Um, he's still yeah. figuring it out, right? There's, there was still a few moments in the game where I was like, ah, you know, defensively, he's like, mm, you probably should have put your right. hand up a little sooner. Just, you probably should have mm-hmm. cut him off. Yeah, but he got it Don't together. go for that steal. Like, yeah. just keep moving your feet. Right. So, yeah. Right. But the offense is very consistent at this point. The mid range is there. Mm-hmm. He's going to draw fouls. He's going to finish around the rim. Um, it's just a matter of just more reps and reps and reps and reps at the highest level. And this is why it's so important for them to probably make the playoffs. Um, so he can get some playoff experience yes. and see some playoff schemes, playoff defenses, have to play playoff defense himself. Um, mm-hmm. that is gonna, you know, be a little bit more eye-opening because he had two opportunities in his first two seasons in the playoffs. His first year, he started against Memphis in the second round. Um, you know, he played a, he played a good amount of minutes there and he kind of killed them in his minutes. Like he just wasn't ready. They brought him in last year against the Kings. I don't really think it was his fault, but like when, when he was out there with the bench unit, didn't go well. He just pretty much was sat for the rest of the playoffs. Like Mm -hmm. even through the Lakers series, he was sat. Yeah. So he needs some legitimate playoff experience with expectation and responsibility on him. Mm -hmm. So they can't just be like, well, we'll just sit you at the end of the bench. Like, no, he got to play through this. And if it goes bad, it goes bad. And if it doesn't, you can build upon that. But he definitely needs to, um, you know, keep playing at a high level and at the highest level of competition. Um, Draymond Green, how did you feel about Draymond's performance tonight? I really thought he he was excellent out there. Yeah, he got into a bit of uh, foul trouble, but some of them – you know, he like he was being fouled and they yeah. they weren't giving him that on the other end. So, you know, he got a little frustrated, had five fouls. But again, still quality game from him. Like really the defense, he mm-hmm. was just putting it on him, putting it on him. Like, so I, I yeah. just thought his game was really, really well balanced. For sure. I mean, you saw the defense on Bam, like one-on-one, he mm-hmm. was making it work. Now, Bam has improved so much as an offensive player that he's still going to get his at this point in his career. But, you know, one thing that I really noticed tonight was, like, how they were scram switching a little bit more. They were, like, timing their double teams perfectly. They were switching right. out of those doubles. Like, whenever Bam or somebody would get a, um, a mismatch in the post, Draymond or someone would just go someone. down there and just and be like get, so, yeah mm-hmm. just get out of there yep the, the, yep <laughs> the guy to, to scramble out and they were just executing those perfectly and um the communication you know, he, exactly that was that's the name of the game with this team communicate play hard if you do those two things they have enough talent size and athleticism that they should be able to hang and, and play good defense against pretty much every team in the league so we finally saw that on display. He made a tough layup in transition, which is funny considering like he did because I look, easy. I didn't know that that one was going in, but he was fouled. <laughs> and it that was been been too. one. Right. It was. It was because he he was he was going. He was he was running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. Vintage vintage triple single from Draymond Green. Yeah, four yeah. points, nine rebounds, eight assists, two steals. Played pretty good defense. The entire night, and it really can't ask for much more there other than the foul trouble. 
Um, Chris Paul, we we talked about him earlier. He didn't really have the great offensive game. He had seven assists, but he uncharacteristic three turnovers. Mm-hmm. And I think other than those three turnovers, I think a few of them was like he just got his pocket picked or something like that, which is yeah, you know, doesn't really happen. But I think overall his scoring game wasn't the same because he didn't have his outlets in the pick and roll. Right. It was just pretty much right. Looney in the pick and roll. So no Dario and no trace, but um, he did hit, but he did hit Looney. Like he did hopefully hit Looney, yeah. we will get to Looney and Looney did cash in because, but I'll wait till you get to Looney because we're going to talk about him. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, obviously Chris Paul at this point in his career needs a role threat, somebody who can take defenders away from him so he can get his open spot for a jump shot. And then, um, you know, he just didn't have that tonight, so he wasn't scoring. But everything else, I think he did was was okay. Was yeah, fine. he was he was just okay because mm-hmm. shot clock violations. I can't stand that eight second violation. Just dude, you're just pounding the ball, and then now mm-hmm. you're throwing a grenade to somebody. Now do something, like no, dude. <laughs> you, is there any air left in the ball? Like, come right. on, come on. Right. It was just like, where is your head? And then he was being very laxed on defense. And it was just like, we can't have you doing this. We we really can't. Which he got out of there and we saw Moses. Mm-hmm. And there was a difference. Yep. <laughs> Moses Moody. I mean, he came in there. He had nine points in six minutes. Like he could, he could score the ball. I mean, I think one of those threes was in uh, garbage time maybe, but. Yeah, yeah, six well, quick points. Don't matter though. He needs to it get him matter. up anyway because he's like, I may not see the floor again. Exactly. <laughs> the thing with Moses is, you know, it's it's a one mistake you're done type of thing with Moses. It's like yeah. at least one cost, one big mistake. Like he had that charge where he should have hit Clay in the corner for a three, right. and then from there it was like, yeah, you're not getting in the game again, brother. And it's like, just let him play through it. Maybe he'll yeah. learn from that. Um. Plus, but it's it, just it, like he's in there because he's afraid. I, I got to hurry up. I got to try to do something so I can stay out here. And it's just like, okay, I did one bad read. But hello, Chris just freaking turned it over down here. Mm-hmm. Back to back times. What are we doing? Like, <laughs> I'm in here trying. I'm getting stops. I'm taking it to the hole. I, I'm going to the line. Like, <laughs> yeah. I hit my three coming off the screen. What? And that was you. That was kind of uncharacteristic of him because he's he's more of a spot up type of guy. And that was more of a movement yep. three, like running into it, quick release. Yep. Um, and he went. He saw yeah. it and was like, I'm going. Yeah. It was that's crazy. something for him to work on, I think, honestly, that can kind of take his game to another level if he speeds up his release on his shot and then becomes more mm-hmm. of a movement shooter rather than just a stationary shooter. I think that will open up a lot more value for him. And then it'll allow him to get a little bit more into like a, a you know, slashing game too. Because if he's coming off these mm-hmm. screens quickly and guys actually have to react to it, then he can pump fake and drive. Yeah. And he don't yeah. got to try to break somebody down for dribble because he's mm-hmm. not that quick. So like if he can add that to his game, that would be huge for him. It would be a, huge for the Warriors offense because he can kind of run a lot of the same stuff he run for Clay for him. Yep. And, um, yeah, so that's something for him to work on going into next season. Um, who do you want to talk about next, Loon? Give it up to Loon Dog, who, oh, ain't, yeah. who ain't played in, like, what, 15 games, it feels like. But dude came out there ready, prepared, mm-hmm. hit, hit a little midi, what, what, okay? <laughs> Looney was grabbing boards, playing the defense. Looney just said, Put me in, coach. I'm ready. Mm-hmm. And and he's showing proof. Like, there wasn't this, like, oh, my gosh, get Looney out of there. What is he doing? It wasn't that. Looney really held up really well. I thought he played a really good game. Mm-hmm. No trace. You got Draymond also in foul trouble as well. I, I just thought Looney came in ready and, again, on the boards, getting blocks. Still, mm-hmm. just I thought he played really well. It was good to see. I, yeah, I thought so too. I thought so too. He was he looked a little bit more mobile than he usually does. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> the ball, scoring the ball. He looked good. Like if he could do that, then he can definitely 
play. Like we know that loon, there's someone, there's a player there. It's just a matter of like, are your legs going to get back under you enough for you to execute the things that we know that you have done in the past. And um, this is a good matchup for him. So if trace is out for extended time, hopefully not with that knee thing, then, you know, maybe we just see a little bit more loon and he can sustain this level of play. That would be great. Heading to talked about Chris Paul already. Let's talk yeah. about Brandon Pajemski. 22 minutes, first game not starting in a while. He was okay. I think solid game overall. Not yeah, I was just like gonna say yeah. yeah. I, I thought it was a solid game. A rookie solid game. Yeah. And 22 minutes is perfect. Like that's all we need. Because he was still getting in there. He was still hustling. He was still doing all of the things. And it's fine. Ha had a little push shot in the lane, you know. He took a quick three. I'd say we didn't need it, but all right. He's trying to get his shots up. But but again, he was still being active. So, and that's what we need anyway. We need his energy. So mm -hmm. I thought I thought he was fine. And I thought... You know, pulling him at certain times and everything was was spot on. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, right now he's more of a um, like a like a GP two esque impact player, where it's like mm -hmm. there's going to be some games where he's like really on his on his thing, doing his thing, and yeah. like that impact will really show. And there's other games where the matchup really doesn't, you know, lend itself to what he brings on the court. What he, yeah. So until his skill kind of takes another leap in terms of ball handling, shot making and stuff like that, I think he's going to have to be playing in these spot minutes, um, like 20 ish minutes a game. And if he can turn into a knockdown shooter or a great pull up shooter or something like that and add a little bit more scoring to his game, then all the other things that he does really well, you know, then it really puts you over the top because yeah. he can stay on the court. He doesn't hurt you offensively. But right now right. he's just not really adding a ton of offensive value outside of connecting the plays. And once you hit a certain level of competition, you're going to need to be able to score. Like there's only so many guys on the team that can just connect the plays before you got to actually hit a shot. So right. <laughs> <laughs> that's something for him to work on going into next season. Yeah. And you mentioned GP too. I thought he played well and it, it's just good to see him just kind of still bringing the energy. So, because, mm -hmm. Early on, it just seemed like uh, he hasn't found his legs yet, but I think he's hitting his stride right now. So that's good. Yeah. And he had a tough cover. I mean, keeping up with uh, Rogier is not, you know, because he's he's a speedster. Um, right. But but I still think that you know GP two pick it up full court, like just just being that nuisance. So, mm -hmm. it and it, I mean, GP two is also the type of guy where like he can elevate a lineup. But that lineup has to bring a certain level of, you know, skill, focus and, you know, attention to detail around him mm -hmm. as well. Right. Like he can get all those backdoor layups and dunks and stuff like that. When when the relocation threes from Steph are like hitting yeah. at one point, we saw at the end of the game, Steph mm -hmm. hit that relocation and GB2 just slipped right to the basket. When guys just aren't paying attention and that relocation is late, that layup ain't open. Right. Like, right. He's picking up full court, but if guys aren't talking and rotating behind him, he may get caught in something and catch a foul right. or something like that. So he is just as dependent on the guys around him as they are on him. Um, so it just he's one of those guys you just need a better team, more consistent team around him, and you can get the full value out of him as well. Um, and they just need – I mean, they definitely need more shooting. But, it's, you know. It yeah. helped this game that they were at least talking on defense and, and getting out right. of transition and stuff like that. So, and him playing with Curry is always a good mix. Like they exactly. they have this connection. Just they already know. So exactly, exactly. So, um, pretty much covered everybody in the rotation. The Warriors win one thirteen and ninety two. They do have Orlando next. Oh, to, to tomorrow, tomorrow no, night, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, they're going right over there to play the magic on that back to back. Let's look at what the magic have done in a recent game. So they lost the last game I, to the King, but before oh, then yeah. 
they had won five straight. Um, they lost two before that, and then they won five straight before that. So they're they're kind of in a groove, right? Like you can catch mm-hmm. them, but like they're a good team, right? They're not any pushovers. Right. They got multiple young, lengthy guys. Jonathan Isaac has been wreaking havoc defensively for them. So this will be a tough game, especially when the back to back. If they can continue to play like how they played tonight, though, it's going to be tough, you know, on that back to back. But if they do that, they can definitely beat the Magic. They beat the Magic earlier this season without Draymond. So this is a very winnable game, and it will just increase, you know, your chances yeah. of getting up higher than maybe 10 and definitely avoiding going to 11. Yes. Yes. We just, we need it. We need it. And hopefully they're, you know, just keep this high that they have off of this win, fold that right into the next game. Um, and like you said, we didn't have dream on the last time. So again, I think they should still be communicating on defense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And let's get this going because you know that they're going to play some defense uh, in Orlando. Like the magic will be all up in Curry's jersey, no matter what. What it's going to be Suggs or somebody will probably Definitely. be on him on his back. You know, he might get a call. Who's to say? Uh, but mm-hmm. so we're, we're just going to need everybody once again. So yeah. I mean, I'm definitely I'm curious to see how J.K. and Andrew play. Um, J.K. typically takes those matchups serious when he's matched up next to a guy that was like in his draft class his or near draft, him. Yeah. Um, obviously, Franz Wagner was the pick after him. Or yeah, was it Giddy Giddy was, was before Giddy Giddy oh, was right okay. before, and then Franz Wagner was right after him. Um, so. JK usually plays with a certain level of intensity against the the mm-hmm. Wagners, the Giddies, and stuff like that. So looking to see if he can have a good game against them because they got a lot of athleticism and length they over do. there too. So that could be tough to score inside against them. Um, and Andrew just got to stay consistent, and his team can take off. Like if he stays consistent, it's a completely different team. Yeah. Um, I hope he understands that <laughs> and, and just does one it. Would but think. One would think. But yeah, we will have to wait and see. We do. <laughs> it is also, <laughs> you know, it's also not to kind of skip through, but it's also a chance to get a look at some guys, right? Because they were involved with Orlando at the trade mm-hmm. deadline. Nothing ultimately came through, but they were involved with Orlando at the trade deadline. So maybe that something else comes up in the off season, and they'll be able to, you know, just get a closer look at some dudes that they may want to inquire on when it's time to, you know, make some roster changes in the future, potentially. So, um, yeah, looking around the league, we needed the Bucks to beat the Lakers. And it's not looking like they're going to do that because Double OT. of course not. Ah. The Lakers are currently up two points with 2.6 seconds left. I don't know if they have the ball or not. I think they do. And they but have the ball. Oh. They do have the ball. So it's looking like the Lakers are going to take that game. So we're not going to. Or the Bucks could get a stop. Maybe they can get a stop. They're lengthy. They're, you know, yeah. they play defense. Maybe. Right? Maybe. <laughs> Stark Rivers team. So. Oh, uh, no. But still, that was still Giannis was definitely fouled in regulation. They yeah. didn't call it. It's the Lakers. They never foul. Remember? That's true. That's right. They never foul. They know how to play without fouling. Not one time fouling. in a game. <laughs> and they yeah, know how to not draw us. Mm-hmm. Mm, what a concept. Funny, yeah. funny, funny franchise, <laughs> funny team. Funny team. But, um, yeah, I mean, just overall recap from this game, like we, we, we've we been saying in the last few games, they have two teams on this team. One's good, one's bad. We got the good one tonight. <laughs> we got the good one tonight, so we'll celebrate that. Hopefully we get the good one again going forward just from here on out because they are capable of doing it. Um, We, I don't know if anybody, I don't know if you listen to the um, plus minus pod, but I'm sure some of our listeners listen to them. Marcus made a good point and just saying like, this team is better than their record, but they just consistently like play below their standard, which I mean, in a way they are what their record is, but we all know that they are, they have more ability than 36 and 34, whatever their record is like. Right. 
they should be somewhere closer to like where Dallas and Sacramento is, like five or six seed mm-hmm. with all things considered. But they've squandered away so many leads. They've lost games that they should have won because of lack of intensity and focus. If they bring the requisite amount of intensity and focus every single night, they can beat pretty much anybody. Now, saying beat somebody four times out of seven, we'll get there when we get there. But at least in a regular season perspective, they can compete. And they've shown that they have competed against all the best teams and gotten up big against them. They just end up squandering a lot of leads away. So let's just hope for some consistency going forward. We want Mm -hmm. another win in Orlando tomorrow night. And then just build upon that going into the postseason. 11 games left. Let's try to win. 11 Many games. Of those possible. Right. 11 games. <laughs> <laughs> they out of the lottery. Um, yeah. Well, the, 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 the non. Look, I need y'all to be up, up, up. <laughs> yeah. We just need some some type of postseason play to, yeah. to catapult you so you can feel you know, at least decent going into next season about and, and having more clarity about what you got in your team in terms of what can help you win a championship. So. Um, do you have anything else that you want to add, Karima? Hey, the vibes, I'm feeling really, really good. So mm. I'm I've lifted up to a seven and a half because I was real low before, but mm. seven and a half. So seven and a half is fun. We can seven do this, half. Justin. I think I think <laughs> the fact that the Warriors are on the East Coast road trip helps. It helps everybody it move on this side for sure. Yeah, because um, we're not. <laughs> we're, not <laughs> we're not starting the game right now. We are actually finishing right. our recording. <laughs> um, so that's good. But yeah, vibes are up. I mean, if they play like this, the vibes are always going to be up, no matter where they are in the standings and stuff like that. Like feel good wins like this, where you see everybody play well and play together and have a good time, is always yeah. a good thing. So let's just hope it continues. As always, thank you guys for joining us. Follow us on all of our socials at Golden Spaces Pod. Listen to us wherever you get your podcast: Spotify, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, sorry, Odyssey app. And you can watch us on YouTube under 95.7 The Game's YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to them. And, yeah, thank you for joining. We will see you guys the next time. It's not going to be tomorrow night. No, it we promise not. that. It's not going to be tomorrow night, but it will probably be after the next game after that. So. Thank you guys for joining us for this one. Hopefully we get a win in Orlando. We will see you Friday. Adios.